we did all the infrastructure, and the one thing I didn't tell you was the the limitation. I only have one thing on the invoice on the on the invoice yet. You didn't know you're going to pay for this, did you? Um, I only have one thing on the outline for the infrastructure where I say limitations, and it's the lights. You can get lots of darn good seedlings. They are really going to suffer if you put them outside, right from right from under the lights. They're just too weak. There's a few things you can do about that. If you brush over them every day, they get stronger. It's like the wind, and they're not so weak. You know, just that motion a couple times a day will strengthen them, and tomatoes will keep them stockier. They won't be so lanky. They won't grow up so much. Just a quick motion will really help. Okay. The other thing you do is for almost everything, by the way you time it, by the time they're ready to go out, you have at least warm days. Every day it's warm that you're home, put them outside. Don't forget them. They'll wipe out, you know. Make yourself a note, put it on the fridge or wherever, you know. Don't forget them, but put them out and let them get that sun and get that wind, and they'll harden up. And they'll also get more light and be stockier and stronger. How do you know when they're hard enough? They just have a different look. They look tougher, you know. Um, and, okay, if you really want to know how to, if they've hardened up, this is a way to harden them up in a hurry. This is what the pros do. They deprive them of water. They bring them, they make them a little dry and that hardens them too. You know? It just makes them grow slower and denser instead of fast and lush. You know? mm. If you make them go a little dry and they are not at all hard, you think you killed them. And they'll go just totally limp and you'll have to water them significantly. You better be watching because you can't get them. You know? <laughs> but they'll just go, they'll go limp way too fast if they're not hardened. If they're hardened, they got a little bit of toughness, and they'll they'll it'll take a little while to hurt from being from being dry, you know. So I'll that's the way too. Them. Pardon? I said I'll brush over them. I'll enjoy the. We'll have a, a yeah. fun feeling together. You still want to put them outside and get the light sure. to make them strong, you know. Um, and then you still, if you're taking them, I mean, I ever do, take them right out of the greenhouse and put them outside when they might get real cold. Use row cover. That's almost always enough, unless. You got a wicked event coming, and then you just shouldn't do it. You know, the Easter freeze—they will not survive with row cover. You know, they have to be inside. You know, but for the average situation, you know, oh, I didn't hard them off. This is the time I have to plant. You know, put the row cover on. If the weather's good, good enough for you to put them out, right? Then they're going to be slowly acclimating while they're out there. And two days later, it starts to freeze. They've already gotten a little used to it, and then the row cover will slow down that freezing time, and they'll make it. They'll be fine. The row cover is indispensable. What, how do we replace row cover with peak oil? We can stockpile it. <laughs> I guess you can It's not weed. hoarding if you're doing it in advance. Right, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. You're stockpiling, yeah. Right. And you learn to use it very respectfully. You don't waste it. So, you know? speaking of row cover, um, in, like for kale and collards this time of year, do you use it? Yeah, I would highly recommend it. Yeah. All It'll day? Do way you, better. Except yeah. for the warm days and then you pull it off? No, I'd leave it on. Just I wouldn't even bother. Too much work, you know? Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, if you're going out right now with kale and collards, I'd recommend hoops, plastic tunnel, row cover for the very coldest times when it's down in the low 20s or high teens. So the plastic cold. cover instead of row yeah, cover? Yeah, because what happens, you're now 300 miles further south. Right. You got a greenhouse effect and it grows. Okay. What's the difference between row cover and the plastic tunnel? Row cover is, do we have any in here? Fabric. It's fabric. It's that white light fabric. You yeah. get that from white. Oh, okay. That we pulled off. Wait to order for you. He's yeah. learning how to buy it. I'm teaching him. He'll get you a good deal. Yeah. It's, it's good and when you get yeah. the, and when you do yeah. the fabric, it's did it, you always double it? No, that was only for the worst cold because okay. my because my tenants couldn't find the heavy weight or the medium weight. They had light weight. You know, it's meant to keep bugs out. It's not meant to hold any heat at all. You know, so, so they the, doubled it up. One layer of medium weight is perfectly fine. Okay. And it's only on, if you have the plastic glazing, the plastic tunnel, it's only on for the coldest nights. If you leave it on the rest of the time, the plants aren't going to grow. Yeah, we don't have not going to get enough sun. That plastic. No, we'll have to go to Troy and what, get What gauge yeah. wire? Get nine gauge wire. Nine gauge wire makes the tunnels just great. Nine okay. gauge, yeah. It works excellently. Yeah. There's so many different ways. That was a different workshop. Where do you that buy the coals of that? Do you buy that Troy also? Um, or feed Lowe's. Feed? Lowe's. Okay. You know, it's pretty darn reasonable at Lowe's. Yeah. Or, the problem is Lowe's a better deal than your local hardware store, but if you want to support your local business, then yeah, you know it's yeah. just we're all in that conundrum all the time, you know, I kinda of go back and forth, you know. Any particular white there plastic, plastic for um, the tunnel. The, okay, this is critical, okay? For your greenhouse, for your tunnels, for everything. And if you don't believe me, tell me your sad story when it happens, because I collect them. Okay, and I have my own sad story, okay? 
do not, you've heard this story before, right? Do not use construction grade plastic. It's a deal, right? Not. Yeah, for about six weeks. Yeah. And when will it fall apart? My story, Diane went to get her brother and mother for Christmas Eve, right? She drove through a snowstorm to get home. I was making traditional Ukrainian dinner, you know, Christmas Eve dinner. I had it all laid out. I looked at the borscht and said, we need some parsley in that borscht. I'll be right back. I went out to the greenhouse to get it, right? I had this gorgeous cloche made with construction plastic, right? It had spectacular collards, broccoli, all this wonderful stuff in it, right? I watched this blizzard, right, utterly destroy it. Now, any other night, Diane said, what are you doing out there? I'm saving my stuff, right? I could have saved it, right? Not Christmas Eve, not with dinner on the table. When will it go out? It'll go out for your Christmas Eve. You know? <laughs> and I hear those stories all the time. That's when it'll go out. You know, Don't think I can get by with it and just replace it. It won't give you that option. It'll, just, it'll disintegrate when you can least deal with it. Spend the money, get the UV treated 6 mil plastic. That is the way to go. I have plastic that I took off my greenhouse after seven years in 2000. And I just keep cutting it down. I'm still using it. Is that what you're using out as your row covers? It's still well, we actually got a deal on that from Van Wingerden, and that's just we we actually bought new rolls. And now is that six? But that's also that's six, six mil. mil. Yeah, okay. six mil. Yeah, right. But but actually, when they were changing a greenhouse out, I told them I was just consulting them. I said, save that plastic. We can use it everywhere. And they all were excited and going to do it. But they took it all off and these and just dropped it because they were in a hurry. And it got full of rain and it got yucky and they ended up throwing it away. So when you save plastic, like if you, if you take it off your greenhouse, roll it. roll it right onto something. And you just cut it down and use it. Where it wears out, it only wears out at the stress points. I say this, right? The big pros, once again, if they're watching this, they're like, this guy doesn't know anything. He's out of his mind, right? Because they won't do that because space is so expensive. They change it every year or every two years because it loses light translucency. It doesn't let as much light in over the years. You can tell how good a grower I am. I took seven years to take it off my greenhouse, you know. The plant still did good enough. I was using it basically for seedlings in the early spring, but mostly just for growing home vegetables. And it just wasn't worth the work of changing it. I don't want to waste the plastic, mm -hmm. you know. Here we change it about every three years. Something else to know. If you look around here, see those slits in the plastic? Yeah. That's because if you make a PVC greenhouse and put polyethylene <laughs> over it, the PVC off-gassing, nice to know it off-gasses, isn't it? PVC off-gassing destroys the, the polyethylene. So, just know, what we have to do is drop that plat PVC conduit down away from the greenhouse so it's far enough away to not be concentrated. Our greenhouse is not inflated because we're waiting on Wade at Troy's to get me the right plastic to replace that plastic. Because of the width? Um, yeah, he, for him he has the right width. But why we have to replace it is because you can see yeah. where it just it degraded it. You know, it has these nice little slits, and know. now the fan cannot fill it up. We're going, why isn't it filling up? And then we looked up there, I was like, oh, that's oh, why. Actually, that's double what we're looking at. Yeah, yeah, double, and it's not inflated because you have all these slits where the yeah. gas coming, you know, yeah, sun shines on the PVC, it off gases, and it and, eats it. And they made wow. the slits. What I was going to say, if you just need a well, small it amount, it yeah, exactly. what I've done, I built a small tunnel. I just went to a greenhouse, and I said, you got any leftovers? You, you know they buy a piece of 200 feet long and they only use 180 feet or something. Yep. I mean, I'm sure they always get more than they really need. And so they sold you know, some. It's okay to have too much, but it's not okay to have too little. It is too not. Short. It is not, yeah. All right. So there's a little piece rolled up someplace and I asked the guy what he wants for it and he said, oh, I don't know. So I said, how about 20 bucks? And he said, that'll be fine. The other thing is places like Van Wingerton, they throw it away. If you connect with them, you can get it. Now the inside layer ain't organic. But it's two layers, so you get the outside layer, yeah. you know. Um, so you just, if you ask around, you don't have to buy plastic. Of course, you are, you're starting where they wouldn't start. You know, you're starting with it when they would throw it away, you know. But that's all values, you know. It depends on, you know. I mean, you might think also, though, if I'm going to make a greenhouse, I don't want to change it too often. I want brand new, you know. The, green, the plastic, to do that 12 by, mm -hmm. by um, 15 was about $70, you know. It was pretty reasonable, you know, but it was half the cost of the greenhouse, you know. Um, the conduit's about three twenty a piece, you know. Um, pretty cost effective, you know, yeah. folks. I think, believe it or not, is there anything on here I haven't covered? What should we be planning now?
Okay, right. That's uh, that wasn't on the thing, and no. that's great. We're gonna it go through. Out clear, then it becomes opaque by oh, Sunday. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. So that's so greenhouse plastics doesn't it starts clear. Well, no, some doesn't. Some does and some doesn't. Okay. There's some that's opaque always. You all, and so you can buy it opaque. You, you can buy it. Them. Yeah, okay. but it doesn't matter which way. You, no, it's the, the same. It translucent. still gets the sun. It yeah. still gets the sun transmission. And yeah. Yeah. But I was saying that the road cover of plastic is clear. It's just that's just the brand. It is okay. It's all the right. brand. Yeah. Just trying to differentiate. Yeah. I mean, okay. there there is no differentiation. Then. Well, it, it it's differentiate differentiation by the brand. Okay. You know? Um, that stuff would probably cloud over eventually too, but not as quick, you know. Would you, do you prefer clear? Does it matter? I like to be able to see what's inside a greenhouse. It's fun. You might not. You might want the exact opposite. You might, you know, if you're growing pot, you want the. You know. yeah. <laughs> That's it. I mean, yeah. Yeah. you do edit these, right? He's the wild man. Yes, what am I going to do? I'm going to the government. And you military. know, I have to watch the whole thing you know again. What? I Thank said you. if you're growing it, I'm not. That's yeah. right. Pat's Pat's doing. I'm he's not he's Mr. Pot. Reggie. Thinking, By the way, there's an idea. Do film this, okay? The drug war is a crime and should be ended. You know? <laughs> I deeply believe that. You, know? you don't but, think funding the CIA is a good thing? <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't. <laughs> We're going that. a little bit off. Edit that. <laughs> when we talk about pot, that's a different story. You know what I mean? The and yes, there is a book called, you know, The Politics of Heroin in the Southeast Asia. It talks about the CIA. But never mind. But we're there. just talking about growing pots of different yeah. sizes. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, why? Is, you know, that's maybe that's a reason why you might want. It. I mean, I like to be able to see what's in mine. You yeah. might not no, for some no, reason. No, no, no. I just wondered. Do that was the best reason I could think of my, yeah. why you might not want to see what's in there. Well, you know? no, because row cover, because fabric row cover is fabric. Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah, you yeah. can't see yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, you can't see it. And so I was thinking, well, here we have opaque. Well, and then so we the plastic is what we what, the plastic is what we want. We want to get yeah. the plastic and only use yeah. the row cover when it's really really cold. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. That is the best system by far. You know, um, I can think of the other reason, and this is actually fairly valid. In I the can, nude, right? If you're in yes, the nude. Yes, exactly. <laughs> if you go into your greenhouse, yes, she's got it. If you go into your greenhouse in the dead of winter on a sunny day, you just had a vacation in the floor. You might enjoy oh. being nude oh, no, in your no, greenhouse. No, no, no. He's talking about row cover. No, no, but I was saying why you I'm, I'm, I'm talking about going naked. You know? <laughs> no, he's talking about row cover being clear, and I, I would want this opaque anyway. I would want a greenhouse that's opaque. Yeah, that way we could you know, sun it. ourselves. In yeah, the right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. the first thing that crossed my mind. And uh, <laughs> then some people use row Before you thought of growing pot. Right? That's it, that's right. Some that's people right. use the, row co the floating row covers to um, keep the bugs out until that's it's the, pollination time. That is a summer thing. It's a lightweight, yeah, yeah. It's less than effective. I don't recommend it because what happens is one little tear, the bugs find their way in. And now, and for some reason, the ones that are looking for a place to lay their eggs are much more, much better at finding a way in than the predators. Mm. You know, Rocco one year, I gave him, I brought him a whole bunch of um, really good priced, excellent seedlings from Troy's. And he was like going away and he was worried about cabbage loopers. He had all this biodiversity. They would have taken care of themselves, right? But he thought, I'm going to be really safe. And he put them all in and put row cover over them came back and they were all eaten to death yeah because there were no bugs that can control the loopers which were probably on them when they got there because the one thing that's great about Troy's is he doesn't use poisons he uses conventional soil but he once saw a kid eating one of his seedlings and he thought I'm not using poisons you know mm -hmm. so he's not organic but he's real clean which means there are cabbage butterflies everywhere it probably came in with the eggs on them and then there were no predators to control it so sure. you know I don't really think it's a good solution for flea beetles it's sometimes necessary you know okay, um, okay let's talk about what to start when, okay? Because I want to start something every month of the year. And so I'm going to be a little bit off off in the cycle, okay? I'm going to talk about the month that you might least think that you want to do it and you're probably too busy to do it. And that's December, yep. right? Now, probably the busiest month of the year for most people because you're trying to have a life and you got all that preparation for whatever your holiday celebration is. We're all celebrating in December, right? December. I want to be starting in December, December at least my onions. Okay, I mean, unless I'm really on top of it and have ordered the kind of onions that take 240 days and started them back in August. The more they overwinter, the better they do. Onions don't like the heat. They do really well grown through the cold. But usually, for me, December's about the first time I get to it. But I really want to start, and we didn't get these guys started, you can see, until I started some. They're someplace over here. They're the really fat ones. Is, Those guys that over says there. That's one three twelve on that one. Pardon? That says yeah. one three twelve. Yeah. If you one. read the ones over there, they're going to say sometime in December. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Exactly. That's when I wanted to start them. We didn't even have enough seed yet. We hadn't ordered it, you know. Then we got the seed and we got these started. 
If I had them start in December, I'd be happier because I want them to be pencil size when I'm playing them out. And if I can plan them out in March, I'm all the happier. What variety? Oh, there's a, a bunch of varieties. I recommend the Copra types. And you can get Copra Clear Dawn is even an open pollinated Copra type. I recommend um, Cabernet for a red. It did really well for us. It keeps really well. I don't buy my favorite red. That's Mars. I love that. It was a hybrid. I grew, I grew red onions this big but kept spectacular. It's got one problem. Monsanto bought Samantha's and it's owned by Monsanto now. Oh, and no. I boycott. Fedco doesn't buy from, from, from Samantha's and I thought if Fedco don't buy from Samantha's, I don't buy from Samantha's. You know, I mean from Monsanto. It used to be, used to be Samantha's. When it was Samantha's, I bought from it. You know? What I have to say about Monsanto a lot of time is you, we can really thank them because they do a lot of bad stuff but they're so obvious about it that we know it. You know, there are other corporations that do equally bad stuff, but they're a whole lot slicker. Monsanto doesn't have a diplomatic bone in their body. They let you know that they're son of a guns all day long, you know. But anyways, Mars I loved, you know. Um,